Hey, hello. Welcome to episode number 57 of the People We Love podcast. I am Adam Choi. Uh, what's up? So uh, pretty much every week for a while now, I've been doing this segment at the top of the show called Something I Love, but I don't think I feel like doing this anymore. There's really no reason for me to look around my apartment and talk about how much I love light bulbs or uh, cans of tuna. So moving forward, I'll just uh, do show-related uh, business at the top and uh, plugs or whatever. Anyway, for more about this podcast, check out peoplewelovepodcast.com. That's People We Love Podcast. And the Instagram handle is People We Love Podcast. And remember to tap subscribe or follow on whatever platform you listen to uh, podcasts on. And of course, five-star positive reviews on iTunes are greatly appreciated as well. So, today's guest is actor and comedian Adri Diaz. Originally from Visalia, California, and growing up a rebellious kid, she couldn't seem to find her way until she discovered her love for performing. And with an extended family who toughened her up through what was not the easiest childhood, Adri also recalls the only person who laughed that time she thought making out with her sandwich in the middle of the high school cafeteria would be funny. Well, Mackenzie Modell thought it was hilarious. So now, Adri Diaz is doing comedy in L.A., and these two are still great friends to this day. I suppose there's a little bit more to the story, though. So let's just get into this one. Here's Adri Diaz. So it's good to see you today, Adri Diaz. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me in your studio. Yes, you like it? Uh, yeah, very, very zen, very serene. What do you see? I see uh, lots of wires and a lot of technology <laughs> set up and soundproofing. And, mm-hmm. and it's very official, mm-hmm. very, very professional. Mm-hmm. We're in my bedroom. No, we're not. It's a studio. <laughs> how's, how's your day going, though? Good. Um, I had work today and it was so slow. I'm a server. It was so slow. I didn't make no money. I made like $35 in tips. Do you work at because you were working during the day? Yeah, but it's busy during the day usually because oh, um, cool. I work in the business district. So everyone comes in real quick to grab like it's like a lunch rush, but there was like no one today. But that usually works out because you need your nights free to do your comedy, your exactly. performing and all this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's cool. Well, why don't we get why don't we just get right into it? Why don't Let's you tell, do me, it. tell me your life story? Start from birth and leaving the hospital and tell me what you oh, remember. Oh, I remember from. that day fondly. OK, <laughs> let me think. What day Actually, was that? May 24th. Oh, that's no, that's not coming up. Well, it is coming up, but not yet. <laughs> I have wow, something in five months. No, I have something I just planned right around then in, in May. So I'm. Uh, oh, really? So for I'm, Labor Day or something? Or not Labor Day? What is it? Is it Labor Day? Memorial I don't Day know. weekend? I always forget. No, but I'm, no one gets to go to my birthday parties because everyone celebrates the weekend. I think it's Memorial Day weekend. Your life is tough. It is tough. Every time for my birthday party, like half the people show up. And then I feel unpopular, but it's really because everyone's out of town. My holidays. birthday is February 13th, the day before Valentine's <gasps> Day. So Aww. I never feel like, you know, if I'm involved at the time, I never feel like I can really fully enjoy my birthday because I'm always <laughs> trying to plan something and worry about the next <laughs> Someone's day. trying to kiss you on your birthday. Yeah, well, <laughs> <just> occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a Valentine's baby. That's Almost, cute. Almost, basically, Aww. pretty much. But uh, You're technically Galentine's Day. What's that mean? It's like girl, like love your girlfriend, like um, like get girls and girls, like best friends. Galentine's. You never heard of Galentine's Day? Oh, I, I get just like some platonic between friends thing. Yeah, it's yeah. like oh fuck, man, like we got our girls, and I think it's on February thirteenth. Yeah, I think. Don't quote me. Maybe. I think it is. I think it's just for people on the fourteenth who are who need need company. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, but yeah. So what happened when you left the hospital? You oh were- my god. Well, I have a crazy story. You remember it. When I was born. Mm-hmm. No, apparently when I was told, born, <laughs> when I was born, the umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck twice and I came out all blue and I wasn't crying. And my mom's like crying. She's like, why is my baby crying? And I almost died. Whoa. Yeah. Crazy. But they, but you survived. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, I broke through. You, you <laughs> I it ripped yourself. it out of my hands. Like Hulk Hogan ripping yeah. off the, the, the t-shirt. Mm-hmm, exactly. <laughs> Sweet. So you made it home. You made it home safely. I made it home safely. Um, what do you remember from, you know, maybe not one and two years old, but, you know, three, four, five early memories of childhood. What do you, what, what um, comes to mind? Earliest memories is like living in this blue house. Um it was, I forgot what they're called. Um, you know, like those housings that are for like lower income people. Yeah. I lived in like that neighborhood, like with my mom and then my brother. Um, did the lights just flicker or was that me? They're flickering. Oh, are they? Uh oh. Okay. I was like, fuck, I'm tripping place, out. Is this place haunted? <laughs> Maybe. I, I see a lot of Edgar Allan Poe stuff on the wall. We can get into that too. Yeah, I, that's how I decorate my studio. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird, it's a, I was going to say, I'll cut, I won't say weird, but uh, it's an interesting mix between um, Zen and Serene and, and Dark. That's definitely my aesthetic. Like, I'm definitely like, my favorite, my two favorite colors are pink and black. 
And I feel like that represents me a lot. Like I love makeup. I love girly things. But then horror is my favorite genre. Yeah, I'm, you're like uh, girly zen goth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's- I used to be like emo in high school. Well, like I try to be. Yeah, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. We're okay, get we're, there. I'm jumping ahead. I'm, no, getting, totally. I'm getting crazy. No, you're gonna, <laughs> trust me. There's been 56 people before you, and many of them have jumped all over the place. <laughs> I've had to wrangle, wrangle them. You wrangle sure. me back. Getting too rowdy. Okay, so I remember living in a blue house with my mom and my brother. Um, and I was probably like four. I remember I was four because I remember planning my fifth birthday. So I was four. And I, those are like my earliest memories of me being four. And I remember I was a big fan of Molly and the Big Comfy Couch. Remember that TV show? It was like a Ring, PBS rings show. Rings bell, yeah. Like a poor kid show. A poor kid show? <laughs> yeah. Because like, ki- it's on are... PBS, right? I think. Oh, I see. It was, yeah. It was, yeah, cause it was like free. Access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, not, it wasn't about poor people. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, God. Um, so, yeah, I remember... I remember having a big piñata that was Molly in the big comfy couch. I think that's what it's called, yeah. And it was in our garage. And I just remember being so excited for my fifth birthday party. Um, so I, I feel like those are my earliest memories. Who was at the fifth birthday party? Uh, definitely the family. They definitely were there. Um, I don't even remember the party. That's weird. I actually just remember planning, planning it. it. I don't it. Really remember the party. That, do you have that? Um, I'm going to f- flash way forward, but do you have that experience with comedy shows? Do you remember p- the planning of them sometimes more than the show itself, which is a blur, but the huh. planning it goes in for it for weeks or months potentially? And not necessarily just because I've only been co- doing comedy for like a year now. So, or it's like stand up for a yeah. year. So maybe. Not yet. Like, I feel like maybe eventually. Yeah, things will become more of a blur potentially. Guess, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like... um No, not really, actually. And what did you do for, for fun when you were five, six, seven years old? I guess early elementary school. Um, what, what did I do? I didn't... I, didn't I, uh, I wasn't really into much i was kind of like a boring kid you were a boring kid in the sense like i I played outside like i didn't like join sports or anything or like any activities and then like when i got older i was like why are all these bitches fucking in gymnastics and like really good at like skateboarding and then i realized like oh like my mom never signed me up for stuff you know um probably because we're poor (laughs) like uh but you must have expressed interest in things and done things to entertain yourself besides what run around in circles in the in the in the yard in the street (laughs) (laughs) yeah kind of kind of i uh played with one stick kind of like i remember me and my brother would just go outside and play with like the neighborhood kids um i'd play with my barbies i guess like i was really into dolls into barbies i remember once i got caught my my Barbies were. I was making my Barbies fuck, and I remember Whoa. I got. In and how old were you? I, okay, little nasty neighbor. She was like a year older than me, maybe. I was five, so she had to be six. And I remember she introduced me to like what sex was. Yeah. And I was only yeah, I was only like five years old, maybe six at that time. I don't know, but maybe five. And I remember she was like this blonde. Girl, I don't remember her name. It was like some basic name like Ashley or something. But like it was this blonde girl with little bangs. And she was like my best friend. She was with my neighbor. And I just remember her being like, do you know what sex is? And I was like, no. And she like showed me this like movie with a sex scene. And I just like remember being like, oh, Ty, like this is cool. Like, you know, and uh, (laughs) I know. liked it. (laughs) Yeah, right. And then I didn't really know like what it was. I didn't even know it was a bad thing until I was. I I don't think it is a bad thing. Well, in the sense like a kid shouldn't be like exposed to that. Yeah. (laughs) So young (laughs) or like a taboo thing, I guess. And so. I just remember I was like playing with my Barbies and I like, I didn't, we didn't have, <laughs> okay, if I bring up one more time how poor I am, I swear to God. Cause I remember I didn't have a Barbie car. So I'd always put my Barbies in my shoes and make them like drive around like those were their cars. <laughs> and I remember I like put two Barbies in one of my shoes and then I was like, mm-hmm, and, like I took their clothes off and I started Whoa. like making them like fuck. And my mom walked in and she got so mad. She's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, they're having sex. And she's like, where did you learn that? Whoa. I know, right? And then I was like, Ashley told me. And she m- literally grabbed me, took me to Ashley's house, and started scolding Ashley. Wow. And I know, it was a whole thing. I remember being so embarrassed. And I was just like, oh, fuck. I didn't mean to like get her in trouble. And that's like when my introduction to like, oh, sex. Like, wow. Yeah. Crazy. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remembered it. Wow. That's 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 quite a story. Oh, truly. Truly, yeah. 
Making my Barbies fuck in the car too. On the shoe, the shoe box. box. <laughs> the shoe car. <laughs> the shoe box. <laughs> it wasn't even a shoe box. It was a shoe. Was there? It was, was like there, a sneaker. <laughs> was there a story that, that that played out? Was there? Were they romantic or was just very? It was very casual with the the. Barbies? Oh, they had no. They were in love for sure. Oh, that's oh nice. my god! Hey, of course. That's even that's what like you should have tell your mom and tell Ash. <laughs> they were married. <laughs> yeah. Very progressive for the time. <laughs> You're ahead of your time. That's, looking back. Was I? Was that? It seems like that's more old fashioned. Like oh, I'm like, ah, oh, I waited till marriage. That's, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah. Even like, okay, it's so funny. Even now, like, I don't watch porn that often. But if I do, I'm I'm so turned off at the idea of them like, oh, it's just a casual hookup or it's just a casual yeah. fling. It's more like, oh, I want to see two people in love. Look at you, You're <laughs> having sex in porn. <laughs> of course. It's weird. I can't. I don't know. I prefer that. I think. You I don't know. think that's that weird. Well, it's not that weird. Yeah, you're right. Well, because I just feel like people watch porn because like it's like living out their fantasies, yeah. and I'm over here being like, no, they need to be in love. And I think that's a lot. <laughs> committed. Of pe- I think that's a lot of people's Is fantasies. It? Just to be committed. Well, a fantasy. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the reason it's a fantasy. <laughs> no, I don't know. But uh, we can get maybe back to back to your life and mm-hmm. and uh, and into it. Where? Uh, well, I was gonna ask, what kind of student were you like in, in school growing up? Oh man, no, it varied. School. I was actually a very good kid. Like, um, I was very studious. Um, all I wanted was like be a straight A kid. Were you? Um, I was. Um, until like, I feel like maybe. Sorry, I feel like I have to burp. Go for it. No, I'm going away. Okay. <laughs> Everyone always <laughs> burps come back. on the podcast. It's fine. <laughs> She'll come back. Um, I was very studious, but then I became very rebellious because um, I like kind of, uh, not kind of, like I never had a dad. I didn't meet my dad until I was like eight. My dad was in prison until I was like eight years old. And then my mom, my mom was like, uh, like mentally ill. And she like self medicate, and so I like had to like live from like family member to family member, and then I could feel myself just like being rebellious. And then like I think in sixth grade, <clears throat> I started like getting in trouble all the time. I became like a bully. Um, I was just like a very mean kid. You were lashing out. I was lashing out, and I think people recognize that. Well, definitely, because there's definitely times where I got in big trouble, but not really. And now that I think about it, I'm like, oh, maybe like my aunt who I lived with at the time was probably like, hey, she's like going through some shit. Like, yeah, did- obviously, clearly, I'm not yeah. going <laughs> to psychoanalyze you or dive too deep into, into all of this. Oh, no, it's fine. Definitely sounds like you were dealing with a lot. Damn. Yeah, I was a troubled kid. So that's why I'm saying like it varied. Like I was very studious. Then I was rebellious. What kind of things when you say bullying What and, and getting in trouble? What exactly were you fucking smoking weed and punching people? What were you, what exactly <laughs> were you doing? Not grade, yet. Sixth grade. <laughs> sixth grade is when I started becoming bad. Um, in sixth grade, I think I, I got in trouble once. Um, well, I didn't. Oh, no, I was actually in fifth grade. This was like the first time I ever got like really in trouble at school. I remember in fifth grade because I love horror. Like horror is one of my favorite genre. I loved it even as a kid. Um, I watched the movie Carrie. Remember, you know, Stephen King's Carrie. Yeah. So I I guess like looking back now, it's very it was very mean of me. But at the time, I was kind of like, I'm just quoting a movie. So, do you remember the movie in the movie Carrie, the scene where um, Carrie gets her period, and then everyone's like, "Plug it up, plug it up," and they throw like tampons and pads yeah, at I've her. Heard, yeah, I've heard of it. I don't okay, so there's like this like traumatic it, yeah. scene, like yeah. something that Carrie goes through. And I remember I was like, in the, like during recess, I was on the playground. A girl, um, one of my friends, her. Um, fly was undone and like some kids were like, picking on her like oh your fly's undone and they're like adri tell her to like zip up her zipper and then i just started quoting plug it up plug it that's up. funny was it <laughs> i got in big trouble because she started crying she went to the teacher and was like adri was chanting to plug it up with my zipper and i didn't think i just thought i was quoting a movie i thought i was i thought i was being that's, funny yeah that is funny <laughs> not a bully well that's not a little it's a little bully you i feel like you weren't trying to be a bully so. i wasn't trying that's the thing and i think that's been my dilemma like i never even realized i was being a bully you're a natural bully i'm a natural bully i didn't mean Why to be always hurting people i don't because i was hurt oh yeah, <laughs> yeah there right. it is yeah, there it yeah, is yeah, i was yeah, hurt yeah, yeah it makes i sense. was taking it out on people and then one time um there was this kid who 
threw a football and like accidentally hit I don't know I don't remember if it was accident but he like threw a football at my friend's face and hit her and she was like crying and in my head I was like oh I'll show him and I grabbed the football and I ran straight towards him and like went boom with like the football and like pretty much like spiked it spiked it in his face right in front of a teacher not realizing (sighs) and I got in so much trouble Mm -hmm. and I was like well he did it first and but they were like, I don't remember. And like, they're like, you can't do that though. Cause like I got him good. And yeah. I was like, oh, I'm a bully. <laughs> I'm like a bully with good intentions, but maybe that's every bully. That's how they think. Like, oh, I did this because of this. You know, everyone has their reasons. No, I don't think so. I think some guys are just assholes. <laughs> you were, you... What about the Joker? The Joker famously is like, oh, I'm like this because. Yeah. This. I guess the, the bullies can be, can be complex for yeah, sure very complex so you were living with uh, you kind of moving around with family and were you yeah. spending time with cousins and people like that i was spending time with cousins yes um and you know that was kind of my first introduction too of um being bullied like they would bully me sometimes so and you learned it or- i learned it from them and i remember going home and purposely thinking of comebacks like in case they say something to me so you were being bullied, or you were be bullying, bu- being bullied at home, but you would learn comebacks from home that you could bring to school. Is that what you were? Saying? Pretty much, yeah. Because I remember when I was about eight, I like was living with my grandma, um, but then I would go visit my cousin's house all the time because I, you know, my grandma was older, and so like for the weekends I'd go to my cousin's house, and they were a lot. They're they're a few years older than me, and they were just like, yeah, just like there was five of them, and I always felt like ganged up on, like. And like, so like, I just like, kind of learned how to be mean and how to like think of things like in case they say something. And then same with school. I remember there was this one bully, his name was Kevin. And I remember he'd always bully me and I'd always like go home and think of things to say. I'm like, oh, if he says this, then I'm gonna say this to him, yeah. you know? Um, and then I feel like that's where I learned how to like be mean. Yeah. <laughs> or... Do you, do you ever do any, well, uh, just a random question, but do you ever do any roasting type Oh my God, thing? I literally say if I were to do it, I would dominate. Yeah. I, it's a, it's bad. I talk about it in therapy. Like if someone like says something to me, I really know how to like find yeah. a, like a plan big on deep. crossing you. <laughs> I know, right? I'll tell you that much. No, I go to therapy now, so I'm good. <laughs> were you close with anyone in your family? Uh, uh, I, I mean, you- don't get me wrong. I was definitely close with my cousins. It's just like. I just, they were just mean. And we were like, that's how we learned how to communicate with each other. Yeah. Like, it was funny, mean. Like, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like we were crying all the time. Yeah. It, made it was you just stronger. like, ah, like a good, like, burn, you yeah, know? Yeah. It wasn't done in, in, in malice. They weren't trying to, right. Party for the, usually. Usually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Families hurt each other without trying, I think. Yeah. What about your, your cousin, Michelle? Oh, okay. Were, so, were you, were you living with her at all? Yeah, I was living with. Uh, she was a lot older than me. She, That's right. So she was kind of like my aunt, but then her kids were my age, and those were the ones who were mean. And gotcha. <laughs> and that's how we. Um, but you know, it's funny. We like kind of learned our humor from her. She was. Um, she my. She's just like funny. She's just like naturally funny, quick witted, and. I feel like we like the kids and I like learned like, you know, what humor was through her. And we also like learned horror too, because like she was a big horror fan and you know, we six years old, six, seven, eight, she would make us like, she'd sit us down and make us watch wow. all these scary movies. Did, and did you want, did you want to, were you interested? No, <laughs> absolutely not. I was terrified all the time, but then they'd make fun of me if I wouldn't watch it. So I didn't want to like, you know, get bullied for that. And I remember, <laughs> I remember, do you know how to make your eyes go blurry? Like, can you like focus on something and then like your eyes can yeah, go blurry? Yeah, I think so. So I remember I would do that when we she'd put a scary movie on because it looked like I was watching it, but really yeah. I wasn't because I was like <laughs> making yeah, my I eyes could, go blurry. I can unfocus my eyes, so I'm usually pretty good at like staring contests because yeah. I can real, I'm, I'm, I'm great at staring into space oh, really? and, and turning <laughs> off my brain. See, that's what I would do. I would yeah. do so they wouldn't make fun of me for not wanting to watch it. Was she, did she, was she a bully? I'm I'm using the term bully, you know, very, very, very casually, but what did, what did she make of, of her kids, I guess, giving you a hard time? It was just, it was just part, it was just the life. It was just, it was a lot of kids, a lot of chaos, a lot of, I'm guessing a lot of comebacks and right. And it's funny because I feel like I talked to some people and they'd be like, what? That's weird. But then I would talk to like a lot of Latin people and like their family. Be like, no, that's what you do. You like roast your family. You know, like I'm like Mexican. And so I just feel like that's almost the norm. And that kind of culture is like kind of you don't 
you like show love and like kind of like a teasing kind sure, of way. Sure, I don't think it's just Mexican. Well, I'm not saying just Mexican. Okay, <laughs> but um, no, I just interviewed Mark Sipka, who I met at your Fresh Fish show. Um, oh, okay, he, okay. And he talked about something very similar, mm. being bullied constantly throughout I mean, his he's a white man. By, yeah, by his two older brothers <laughs> and that kind of making him like, stronger and be able you know being able to right come back and mm-hmm. this and that and be able to deal with anything in la really especially right do you feel like that your your cousins made you stronger today and you, even your your aunt uh, yeah your aunt, not your aunt your your uh, your cousin who's my like cousin your, aunt yeah your cousin aunt yeah oh definitely yeah um but then i've been like now that i'm older i've been learning to like back off <laughs> yeah like i was like oh i'm being so mean to you because i love you you know and most people are like no you can't <laughs> yeah. you can't tease me all the time you know um you gotta balance it out i gotta ba- i'm learning how to balance it out yes exactly go. and what about like in middle school and high school what was what was life like then what kind of student middle were you? School, what were you into Socially, again comedy, i was still rebellious stuff. um middle school um nothing much like i feel like that was like a weird time for me um as it is for many people. Yeah. Yeah, especially because uh, I had like just started living with my mom again. So I was like living with her and I was like adjusting to that. And um, I was actually kind of like a loner. I didn't really have that many friends. Um, I was just like really shy and just awkward, like all of us, you know, all middle schoolers. But then I met one friend um, and she like became like my best friend. And, you know, she's still like one of my best friends to this day. Um, how we met was pretty funny. Uh, and that's like when you know that's like gonna be your BFF, you know? Because you have a good meeting story. Yeah, it's like truly f- hilarious. I've heard like I don't know whether it was on Seinfeld. I think it was on Seinfeld where George is like, "Oh, I'm not gonna be, be with this this girl long term because we don't have a good meeting story, so we're not getting." Ah, uh, see, yeah, see right. Yeah, Isn't well, that a thing though? I don't know. What, what what is your meeting story? Well, okay, so this is how. Uh, I was just trying to be funny. I'm always just trying to be funny. So it was weird. I remember in seventh grade, we were like in the cafeteria and there was like a, um, um, like a screen and like, I don't know why. I truly don't know why. It must've been like the first week of like middle school. And I just remember the principal coming around, like he had like a camera, like a video camera and he was like filming all the students and like it was projected on the screen. Live. It's live. Yeah, it was yeah, live. Yeah. And so I remember thinking like, oh, I'm going to do something funny. And so like I was like, oh, if it, the camera's on me, I'm going to start making out with my sandwich. And I was that's just good. Right. That's, OK. That's pretty, thank you. That's, but oh, hold on. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to make me. out with my sandwich. But as I had that thought, I saw my friend on the screen. Like I was looking up at the screen and my friend was right next to me. And then all of a sudden I see that it's panning over. And I'm like, here it is. Here's my moment. And then right as it's like panning towards me, I start like making out with my sandwich hardcore. And in my head, I'm like, oh, everyone's going to start dying laughing. I'm going to be so funny. And then all of a sudden I hear like a loud, ew. And I was like, no, like I think, okay, I'm not even, I'm not trying to be anything. I literally think I did it too good because I think people thought he happened to catch me doing it. I don't I think, see. I don't think people thought that I purposely did it. Yeah. I think people thought like, oh, gross. Like they just caught this girl like eating her sandwich it's really weird. weird. And this was middle school. Or this something? was middle school. You know, you know what I think your mistake was? Or I guess not mistake, but I think you needed to look at the camera. Exactly. Before you exactly. Started that's exactly what I'm saying. Like it was yeah. coming towards, I knew it was coming. So I was already yeah. got my cue, got my mark. I'm yeah. ready to go. I heard action before the camera was on yeah. me. You know what I mean? And I started making out with it, and all these people thought I was doing it on, or I thought that was just yeah, like who, what I was doing. Being weird. Yeah. And then I just remember like my face flushed, and I felt so embarrassed. Mm-hmm. And I was just like mortified. And I was like, Are you fucking kidding me? Like, how could this happen? Like, this is already horrible. And then. I think like I had PE like the next day and then this girl came up to me. She's like, hey, were you that girl who's making out with her sandwich? And I was like, oh my God, no. Like I did it on purpose. Like I was just trying to be funny. And she was like, no, I thought it was so funny. I was dying laughing. And that's the girl that I'm still friends with oh, to this day. Yeah, she's your number one she's fan. She's my number one. She truly, and that's actually someone we should talk about too. She's my number one fan too. Literally, Since your day number one, one. <gasps> Fan, oh, your first fan. Oh my god. Okay, her name is Mackenzie Modal. Mackenzie, shout out. <laughs> nice. Um, 
Yeah, I guess yeah. There's some people that have been my fans since day one. <laughs> you got fans. <laughs> yeah, but you got you have at least one. Yeah, you got your 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 cousin aunt. You got your right cousin your aunt. One friend who likes you making out with just <laughs> two fans. She got it. She got the humor. We're, um, we're rolling now. Yeah, and so yeah, and then we were like best friends in junior high. She was like mainly my only like I had friends, but like she was like my best friend. And then in high school, we were still like best friends. And um, we definitely had like some problems with boys, but you know, who doesn't? Normal things. Norm. And then high school is when I got into drama um, for the first time. And that was like you my mean introduction. performing wise? Performing anything. Yeah. No, I'm just, I mentioned not as opposed to like personal drama. You oh mean, yeah. Right. No, uh, no, I had the. Performing. <laughs> exactly. Gotcha. I had the drama before. When I now got I was trying to put it on drama, stage. Just, yeah. Just clarifying. <laughs> so in, in college, you said. No, high school. In high school. Though. Yeah. I joined the drama department. I like you had to audition to be like in the advanced program, and um, I just remember being like so nervous, and I was like, I really want to be in it. And I auditioned, then I got in, and I just remember being like just so happy. And that was like the one of the first times where I felt like you know a good sense of community and just like like minded people. And that's like when I just started like liking that. And I felt like that was my hobby, but it just like took so long for me to get there. To find it. To find yeah, it. I like didn't know what I was doing and like I felt like I didn't have any guidance to be like, hey, what do you like? Like, let's figure out what is you, you know? Like, I just kind of felt like I had to find out, which I guess most people do. Yeah. It's not that big. A, life's a journey. Life is a journey. That's so what they say. Were, yes. I have a poem right behind me that says The Journey. It's one of my favorite poems. Who, who wrote that one? Uh, Mary Oliver. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a poetry expert. Oh, that's okay. I, per se, I, I suppose. <laughs> but... Um, so you were in the high school drama department. What kind of mm-hmm. kind of performing did you do? Um, just like high school plays. Uh, they had like improv too. Um, and yeah, and I just remember I was kind of naturally good at improv. And uh, I remember the first play we ever did was The Crucible. Arthur Miller's The Crucible. That one I know. Yeah, it's such a very typical like high school yeah. or like college production show. Um, that was like my first play I'd ever done. And, um, I remember I auditioned for like as a sophomore in high school and I auditioned for the girl who like runs in the forest naked. Uh, do you remember that scene? Maybe. It's like in the very beginning, that's how they get caught for like doing witchcraft. Yeah. Cause they're like, Oh, I, I forgot her name. They're like, Oh, we saw that girl fucking running in the forest naked. Yeah. Witchcraft, witchcraft. And that's like where it all starts. I auditioned for her. Like she only had like a few lines. Like yeah. I was too scared to audition for Abigail, you know, like the main the main hoochie, yeah. the hoochie witch. <laughs> the, main, the main hoochie witch. <laughs> the main hoochie witch. And I like was like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to get that. Senior's going to get that, you know? And so I purposely auditioned for the smaller part. Um, but like I made it funny, I guess. And that's how I got it. And I remember they put me like in a nude suit because obviously I wasn't going to run yeah, around naked. I not in high school. Especially not in high school, no. yeah. Um, so they, I remember they put like a fleshed colored suit on me. Yeah. And Do you still have it? No, the guy they had to keep it. Oh. <laughs> I guess that would be kind of weird if they were like, or, "No, I wore underwear and a bra yeah, and stuff." There so. you go. <laughs> well, we could use this if you had it. You could still use it for some routine, maybe <laughs> for my show. For yeah, Fresh Fish. Any, yeah, but it wasn't even like exactly my flesh color. Like, it was definitely much lighter than me. Yeah. So still- I don't think it registered to the audience that I was like, "Oh, she was supposed to be naked," you know? Yeah, they were like, <laughs> they were like that white lady. <laughs> That really, that lady wearing all white, yeah, <laughs> running lady around, all white running, running across the stage. What did your, what did your family and friends and cousins? What do they all think of, of you going into performing? And friends, what, what was the rea- everybody else? Like when I moved reaction? to LA, or just like in high school? In, in high school, when you started oh, they were all stage. about it. They're all like, oh, very cool, and like you know, they'd come to my shows, and I remember they'd be so complimentary. Um, like I knew I was good at it, you know. Like I knew I was good at acting. Um, and so, like, I knew, like, I, I believed them when they'd compliment and be like, wow, like, you know, like, I remember there was, like, a sh- like a show we did where it was, like, two mini plays in one, and the seniors, like, did the first half, and, like, the younger ones did, like, the second half, and I just, like, remember, like, one of my aunts, like, telling me, like, wow, like, you can just really tell the difference, <laughs> like, you know, and so, like, I was, like, Between. in the sense, like, of um just, like, who are the better performers, yeah. and we were, like, the seniors when we did the senior part. Sure. Um, yeah, I just like felt like, yeah, it was naturally really good, but it's crazy. I never thought I would do it. I never thought I'd pursue it. I was just like, I just like doing this. Ho- yeah, you said yeah. it was a hobby. So you're in high school, you're doing uh, all these, th- doing the theater thing mm-hmm, and doing, you the did plays. The, doing the crucible. What uh, what happened after that? How did uh, the rest of high school go? Oh, okay. So like high school drama was like my number one thing. I was like, oh, this is th- I love theater. 
Um, I did have like a very weird moment where I feel like my teacher who I looked up to, like one of my teachers, my my teacher and his name was uh, Ryan Pollen. He was like my drama teacher who like put me into like advanced. Like I loved him because I was like, oh, he's teaching me so much. Like he like trusted me to be in advanced drama, even though I was like a sophomore in high school. Um, and we had like a very, like we had like a, our relationship like immediately like was strained. And it is my fault, but I do feel like he kind of overstepped a lot of things. So what happened was um, I was in, I, I was a junior in high school and I was the lead in this play. Um, oh, I forgot who, who was it by, but it was a, uh, it was uh, uh, do you a, do you know the story about like a, a guy who sees an imaginary like six foot rabbit? I forget. It's called Harvey. And so I was like the lead in that. I wasn't the rabbit. I was like the, the, the sister who like, you know, gets him committed to like an insane asylum. But like the story is about mainly me, not necessarily about him. So it was like my first lead. And I just remember being like so happy. And I remember it was like the lead. It's always been like the lead's jobs to like get like the director, get the people who help out in the production, like give him like little gifts. And like it usually cl- I have, I'm, how it worked was like, oh, everyone like gets like five dollars and um, or donates five dollars and then they go buy the present. But no one like donated money. And so I was like a little klepto in high school. The rebellious part was coming back out. I would steal like from like the mall, like typical teenager, you know, teenage girl. I would steal shit from the mall. And I remember my friend Brazil and I remember telling Brazil like, oh, well, because her and I like, you know, we're doing the show. And I was like, let's just go to fucking the mall and steal some shit for them. And she's like, yeah, sounds good to me. So the very director, like for the director and the people who helped out in the show, like there was um, like tech people. You're going to planning to steal gifts for people. Yeah, I was being a little Robin Hood about it. Look at that. (laughs) See these villains they have motives. Right. No, you're a, you're a cr- But I mean I definitely stole before for criminal me. with a heart of gold. Yeah, right. So I definitely you're stole Nest case. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember like it was a the last it was like a Sunday, it was like a no, Saturday, sorry, Saturday. It was like a Saturday matinee show. It was our last show. Um and so we were like let's go to the mall before we do the show. We'll steal some presents and we'll go to the show. Like that was the goal. That was the plan. And of course, we got caught shoplifting and they took us a little, we got caught in like JCPenney, they took us to a little mall jail and there was this whole thing and I just remember we were like crying, like we have to leave, we have to go, like um, like we're in a play, like we're going to miss it and like everyone in the, because th- we were like call time was maybe like an hour or two before the show started and it was maybe like 30 minutes before the show was about to start. So obviously we had to let, like we told our parents and the parents had to tell. You had already missed call time. Yeah, we missed call wow. time. They had to let them know like, hey, they got arrested. They <laughs> are in mall jail right now. <laughs> they can't come to the show and we were like, like just like crying and we're just like please like we're so dumb we'll never do this again and like um you know they didn't take they decided not to take us to juvies but they had to have like parents come pick us up and that's like a whole other story but um her mom ended up coming to pick us up i'm not even joking it's like 10 minutes before the show's starting and her mom picks us up she's so mad she takes us straight to that i remember her being like she's like you guys better have the greatest performance of your life you better do so good after this and like we were just like still crying like putting our makeup on in the car <laughs> real quick we like get to the show everyone's furious with us like the director didn't even talk to like my teacher he was like uh, ryan Poland. he like didn't even talk to us he was like he was like getting getting your costumes getting places and i just remember being like so flustered like oh my god and everyone was so mad at us because when we were walking in we saw like someone who was like the assistant director she was about to be my part like she was like ready reading the lines like she was ready she was about to go on stage like with the script you know and i was just like fuck and then we like get there and then we do the show and i just remember we had this big meeting afterwards and like the director uh, my teacher was so mad at us and he was like you know like how could you guys do this like you know i trusted you and you guys get arrested before a show like you know and i just remember being so upset and he like wanted to kick us out of drama class like he didn't want us to do it anymore like we're juniors he didn't want us to do it our senior year and he's like all right you have to like work for like you have to like clean the class like you had to do like all this stuff to like gain my trust again pretty much yeah community Mm -hmm. service which was fine but i kind of just like and maybe it's just me again me just being rebellious i just remember not like taking kindly to because i just felt like he was interfering a lot because like i like my parents grounded me but i was still allowed to go to prom 
And I remember he was like trying to talk to my parents, be like, no, she shouldn't be allowed to go to prom. And I'm like, don't fucking, it's not up to you. Yeah. Like, it's my parents. Like, they are only going to let me go to prom because they liked my boyfriend, you know, at the time. They're like, oh, we're going to let you go for him, not for yeah, you. He's not you your know? parent. He's just exactly. a fucking drama And I just like felt like he like interfered too much. You were trying to get him a gift. I know, right? <laughs> what did you? What were you stealing for him? Were, were you stealing um, anything for him? I just remember what I got caught was I was stealing bracelets. Like we had like three tech girls who like did tech and like makeup, but it was just like fucking here's some mascara, you know, like. And so we were, I was stealing bracelets for them, um, and I don't even remember what I got him. Um, but you got him something. I don't think we had time. We got caught right away. Oh, but you were, you planned to. We were just like going to shop around. We're going to steal around. <laughs> we're going to look around, yeah. decide what to steal, and then you know. Yeah, you got to plan this more out. Right. <laughs> well, we had like two. Or, like we you had didn't like have a lot of time. We had a lot of time, and then we didn't <laughs> because yeah, we got you had caught. Some and then you didn't. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, then our relationship just got strained, and like I just like was very upset that he was trying to like interfere with me going to prom and so he so i didn't like do the community service i like did like one day of it but he wanted me to come like a whole week i did like one day and so he let me still be in advanced drama but he purposely didn't put me in any shows my senior year oh man i know it was very heartbreaking um i only got to do like two shows one was because um someone like a like a like one of the assignments was like, oh, a student gets to direct a play. So she got to do the casting and the, all that. So she casted me. That's the only reason why I got in it. And then we had like a improv um, show, but I was the only one who was actually good at improv. So he was like, okay, well, we have to have Adrian on it. Was it so clear that, was it obvious that he was like punishing you? Yeah. Yeah. And I think the rebellious part of me wasn't like, I'm sorry for what I did. It was more like, well, fuck you. Like, you know. You're but, not my dad. But yeah, but you still like you still like drama and being part of it enough to kind of like just even on the the Well, I didn't outs. even realize he was until I started realizing why am I bar- booking any of yeah. these shows? Like I'm a senior, like I should be in these shows. Yeah, you like, thought you know? maybe he got over this stuff or it was like Yeah, I definitely thought he was mad, but I didn't think he was punishing me. Yeah. Um and then not until like halfway through the year, I was like, what the fuck? Why don't I do? and then I realized yeah, people, oh he's mad people at me. We still. Don't love. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's, a, that's a different episode. Oh, truly. <laughs> what about after high school? Where do we go from here? Um, um, so I like was truly like lost. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I always thought, oh, acting's cool, but I never thought I'd actually pursue it. Um, and then my friend who got caught with me <laughs> at JC Penny, we got arrested for shoplifting. She moved to LA, and she's like, I'm gonna become an actress. I like uh, auditioned for the school. And um, I didn't have like money to move, so I was just like working at like the at the mall. I worked at like the food court in, in the mall Visalia. in Visalia, yeah, my hometown. And I was just working there, kind of just like I was also like a big stoner and like a party girl. So I was like, oh, all I want to do is party and you know smoke weed and you know go shopping. Like that's all I cared about yeah. in that moment. And um, yeah, I didn't really have any long term goals. And then like after high school, I lived with my dad and his wife and i did not get along with his wife like her and i like fought all the time she was evil hag from hell and she like started she was like you know what since you're working you could start paying rent here and i was like what the fuck i'm not paying rent for this shit fucking apartment we lived in an apartment in visalia on the bad side of town i was like you think i'm gonna pay it was only like a hundred dollars but i was still like you think i'm gonna pay a hundred dollars to live in this shit town i was like no and then my friend who was already in la was like hey we have a room open like move in with us and i was just like fuck okay and it was just truly a whim and i auditioned for the school she went to and then once i got in and all that stuff i was like oh this is what i'm supposed to do like th- uh, why why didn't i think of it before like yeah, of you course start to see a path you started to see some yeah. possibilities presenting themselves right and then then i was like so about it and i was just like wow like this makes so much sense but i still didn't have the discipline i was still kind of rebellious i was still like a party kid and it didn't t- like i've been here for like almost eight years now by not even joking not until like the last two or three years is when I got like serious about doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. I was still like party mode. Like, ah, like I just want to have fun. I'm in LA. No, I'm having fun. I'm partying. I'm meeting people, you know, were you still, I mean, in the early days in LA, were you, were you working on things, but just not being focused and working hard enough? Were you, were you, yeah, but you were, you were acting, you were pursuing some acting I, training. You were doing, well, right. I, mean, I was doing def- things, but you weren't as focused and working as hard as you may. Exactly. Should have been working I remember a girl back. tried beating me up about it. <laughs> beating you up? Yeah, it was the weirdest thing. I remember 
Um, cause like, again, like I was just like fucking half-assing all my assignments. Like if we did like a scene in class, I would be trying to barely get memorized the day of, or I would just ad lib and like, you Why? Know, just, because I wasn't focused. Like, cause yeah. I like truly, um, had, it's like, I had the desire to become like, oh, an actress, like famous, rich, but I still was learning how to like, oh, well half, like I was relying too much on my talent. Like right. I was like, I'm just talented. That's all you need. But then, then I was learning, like, no, fuck, like, I, you have to, like, work hard, too. And that's, like, half of it, if not most of it, no you doubt. know? And so I remember once I, like, didn't I, – I, like, me and my scene partner didn't work on a scene. And I remember texting him, like, hey, don't come to school since we're not off book. Like, it was, like, an assignment. And so he didn't come to school. And I was joking, told everyone. I was, like, yeah, I told him not to come, haha. And then a girl, I guess, got upset by that. And she was, like, upset that – you know, everyone's working hard here, but I'm the one who's not like, you know, working as hard. Like I, she thought felt like I should, didn't belong there. Like I didn't deserve to be there. She makes a point. I know. I I know. I know. (laughs) No, she is making a good point, but it was just interesting. Well, her approach was very weird because I remember, yeah, of course I totally agree. Like I shouldn't have been there because I wasn't working hard. Um, but I just remember once I was walking past her and I like accidentally brushed up on her and she took that as me like, running into her yeah. and then she's like don't fucking touch me and i turned around i was like what and she's like come outside right now you and me i'm gonna kick your ass Whoa. And I was like, yeah i know right and i was like what the fuck and i follow her outside and everyone's like no no guys don't fight don't fight and then in that moment i didn't know why she was acting like that i just thought she was just being a crazy bitch yeah. and then later on she comes to me she's like it's because you know i just like felt like you know you have so much potential and you're not applying yourself and i was like so what you're gonna beat the motivation <laughs> in me like that's not how that works you that's know a, that's a, that's pretty funny <laughs> that is pretty should that funny. be a stand-up joke can i talk about that on stage uh, yeah it's worth, oh, okay yeah, i forgot about that i forgot yeah, that happened somebody like who believes in you wants to beat you up. <laughs> she that's... wanted to kick my ass. She would have too. She was a big girl. Yeah. You know what that's like? Huh? That's like in Billy Madison. I don't know Billy Madison, the Adam Sandler movie. Oh, yeah. I haven't watched it in school. forever, though. But he, you know, he's in love with his teacher. And he's 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 being sabotaged. And he's slipped back. He's drinking. He's failing school. He's doing good. But then he started doing bad. But he needed to refocus. Mm. So she... She should beat him up. In the oh pool, yeah, in the pool, mm-hmm. in that pool mm-hmm. scene. That's yeah, yeah, she yeah. That's funny. Was punching the the um, punching the motivation him, the in him. back into him. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I saw it once, probably like in elementary school. Yeah, it's a cinema classic. I know, I know. It should be part of the Criterion Collection, right? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> if you want to be a comedian, yeah. Um. So yeah, I just remember I wasn't motivated. I was also like, I realized later on like the reason why i was never motivated was just because like i had like all this trauma for my mom and my dad and i never dealt with it as a kid and so when i like not until like a few years ago i was like huh all my relationships with people aren't working and i keep be like getting in fights with people i keep you know being labeled as like mean like i'm a mean person i'm not like a hard worker all i do is party and stuff and so that's when I was kind of like, oh, damn, like, I think there's something, like, wrong with me. And that's and then I started going to therapy, and then my the therapist was like, well, yeah, dude. Like, you've, well, she didn't say, yeah, dude. But she was like, yeah, of course you don't. You have all these issues because you never dealt with your mom being, like, mentally ill. You never dealt with your dad being in prison and not being there for you. And I was like, ah, okay. And, yeah. No, that's good that you're – Worked, working, worked, had, you know, and I'm sure we're all still working. Through yeah. Things, but <laughs> yeah. To, to be self aware enough and to. Right. And to don't take get me wrong. I was. Steps to, mm-hmm. to improve your, yourself is, is great. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I wasn't like a raging bitch. I wasn't like over here punching people. It was just more like, ah, uh, like every boyfriend I ever had, like we'd always get in fights. Yeah, you weren't happy with I was yourself. Just un- I wasn't happy internally. And, your mm-hmm. and like I would just like get in arguments with people all the time. And, um, yeah, and then took a took a few years for me to realize that. And so yeah, about like two years ago, two, three years ago, I started going to therapy and yeah, it's like really helped me become self aware. What about your friend uh McKinsey? Did, McKinsey. Did you keep in touch with her at, yeah, when, when you um, moved to LA? Oh yeah, she was a big supporter. Um she stayed in my hometown. Um she recently moved to Bakersfield though, which is only an hour away from her hometown. Yeah. But um she yeah she was a big supporter of me she'd come to see my plays when i was like when i did like my college plays um yeah and like she's always yeah she's always been sweet and she's always been there um she's like last year because i started doing stand-up a little over a year ago and then i did um 
a show at the comedy store and you know i was like oh it's a big deal like this is so exciting and she like, came all the way down i mean it's not that far but like <laughs> i mean don't ah, no i mean it's a good thing what she did yeah <laughs> she no, it was very sweet she like came all the way down here just to come see me yeah and so it was very sweet and um yeah and she was laughing loud when she came to see me and it was yeah it was just very nice and she's like yeah and she was the person who originally laughed at you making Eating the out sandwich. With your sandwich. Making out the sandwich, yeah. It's funny how these little moments can be impactful. <gasps> right. And it's actually very cute. They're, like We do this tradition. Um, this is already like our 12th year. But every year we recreate a photo that we took when we were in seventh grade. Like there was like this dumb photo, you know, MySpace every days. Every year you recreate we, Every year we recreate the photo. Um, there was like... We took like a dumb picture and McDonald's once where I, I was like eating a French fry and she was just drinking her Starbucks. And then a year later, we happened to be at the same booth with the same items. We're like, oh, let's recreate that photo. And then like every year we're like, no, let's just keep doing it. So we have like 12, maybe this will be our 13th. No, maybe this is our 12th, 12th year doing it. Wow. Yeah. So you can even see like this progression of like, it's cute. It's like we see us getting older Um yeah, if it is done that we're still recreating the photo of the French fry in the mouth, the uh, um, no, Starbucks. That's, that's, that's sweet. It's very that's sweet. sweet. It is when very do, sweet. Do you do this on, during the holidays or something when you go up there? Um, usually I mean, when I can get up there, because since she's been in my hometown for a while, so it's always me like having to travel back to t- just take that photo, or like to also hang out, but like to take that photo. Um, but now it's been around March, March, April is when we recreate it, so it's coming up already. So I think our twelfth. Or thirteenth ones coming yeah, up. Yeah, it's. I'm. I'm guessing you see her. It sounds like at least a couple of times a year or something like that. Yeah, that not as much since she moved to Bakersfield. Yeah. Um, but and that was like two years ago. Um, but yeah, when I would go to back to Visalia, I yeah. visit her and stuff like that. Yeah, and that it's one of those relationships that's so nice. It's like we won't talk for like months and months, but then when we see each other, it's like, oh hey, what's you up? Pick, up, like, right pick where up, you yeah. Left off. And yeah. it's so that's nice, cool. and you know that is rare. That's something like I'm learning. It's like very rare to just like have someone like that where you just like pick up where you left yeah. off, and you can be silly. You can just talk about whatever you know. Be yourself and not be judged, mm-hmm. and not. Ju- judge the other person and they can right. be themselves right no it's it's nice to ha- nice to have that for sure yeah why don't you tell me more about like your la life and what you've been working on maybe the last couple of years and then we could kind of get into what you're yeah. working on now and and i'm sure i've taken up enough of your time oh no don't worry hair. about it um yeah i've uh my la life i you know i did like theater school um and yeah i like made a lot of great friends there that are still my friends to this day um and uh i like was a little lost after theater school because it's interesting because i was there but then i also didn't really like it that much this was all in la this was in la and i was kind of like why don't i like this um and then i realized it was like oh because we mainly did like dramatic stuff and then i was like oh i like comedy i'm good at comedy that's what i'm like because in drama and also too i had all these like emotional blocks like because i never dealt with like my mom and all this stuff and i remember we'd always do like these fucking scenes in drama or not drama class i'm in uh like our high or god damn it our uh college like theater class where it's like oh she wants you to break down and cry and i was like what the fuck no like you know i'd be making jokes i'd be cracking jokes and that was me i did not want to go there and you know my professor recognized that um and i remember my professor did not like me until maybe my last semester there when we had to do this exercise where we talked about like our life and I talked about my mom and then she was like, Oh, that's why you're like this, <laughs> you know? And then she finally understood me. And then that was like a big thing with me. It was like, Oh, I didn't deal with stuff. I just used humor to like, you know, um, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. And a lot of people do that. <laughs> and most comedians do that. That's why we're comedians. Right. <laughs> and yeah. And then, I then after then I, then I started dating this guy and he was really supportive and he was just like why don't you like do improv like didn't you do improv in high school and I was like yeah and so I did UCB and then um I started like taking classes there and uh so like I feel like improv was like my first love because I just remember loving it in high school I remember like when I did did UCB classes I was like ah oh, like this is so natural like I love it um and then I was like on a house team uh like last season 
I was not. I'm not on a house team now. I didn't make the cut. <laughs> no, that's cool that you were. <laughs> I was, but then yeah, the I fucking I bombed that audition. I was like, fuck. And, um, but anyways, because like they all do like new teams every like um six months to like, a year, and uh, I tanked the last one. Um, but it didn't stop me. I'm gonna audition again when it comes back around. But uh, yeah, I just been doing UCB stuff. I had a web series called Terror Tales of LA. I don't know. I don't think we were friends then. Mm, I, I did it like know. in like 2015 all the way to like 2018. It's still um, online? It's still online, yeah. It was like my first introduction to like being on camera. Um, like my my boyfriend and I at the time, him and I, like we loved horror. We loved comedy. Those were our two favorite things. And I had this like old script like sitting in my, like I love writing. That's like, a big thing. That's one thing I've learned is like I love writing. I love telling stories. And... I like had this old script like about like these two girls who like it was like almost like Broad City but if they were in a haunted house yeah. um and then I remember when Broad City came out I remember being mad I was like fuck like now I can't do the idea I wanted to do <laughs> cuz like I liked the show Workaholics when it first came out and I was like oh what if we did it but, but with girls but like in a haunted house and then um and then I saw Broad City came out and I was like, ah, fuck. But then my boyfriend was like, no, that's you can still like film it. It could be like a, you know, web series. And so we filmed like an episode like just off our phones. And then we were just like, we like this. We like doing this. And he was a writer too. So we kept like, it took us a second to find our voice because we just kept doing like random little sure. horror themed sketches. And then towards the end, it was more like point specific. Like, oh, the joke is, is like things in LA that are scary, like traffic, like <laughs> yeah. um, parking tickets. And we would just treat like those, like uh, those things as like the horror in this. I mean, we do like parodies of things like what you saw. Me. I, that's exactly that's what, what I thought. Yeah. Of that's, I was, that, that was originally from my web series, but then I was like, Oh, I could do this live. Yeah, and I tell, did it live. Tell, tell the audience about what that character that I saw. So you <laughs> I did a, how Adam met me. He saw me at a show. I did a sketch where, um, I did like a scream parody. Um, I forgot what year it came out, but the ninety, the sc- yeah, scary the movie nineties, uh, Scream. Um, I did a parody where I was like Drew Barrymore. I had the blonde wig, I had the whole outfit, and you know the scene where she gets a phone call and it's like he's like, "What's your favorite scary movie?" And I did a parody of it, but it was like someone calling me and being like, "What day is street cleaning?" And it's like me reacting like, "No, God, no, please don't do this." Like you know, like don't make me move my car. Don't make me move my car. Like you know, and so we just like you know mapped that, and that was like the. It was very L.A. Very least, L.A. Many many cities with typical parking though. Or, right or for with, sure. Right. Anyone. With, who's dealt with difficult parking situations <laughs> and you know, difficult parking cities will will relate to that for sure oh for sure um so yeah like that's how you met me you saw that sketch um that was a fun show that scoop d show that was a fun show that was a good always. show always a good show yeah i like always that a fun show. Always a shout out show. to scoop d's for sure scoop d boop d's scoop d boop d's yes part of me no Scoop-dee apostrophe <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 their, not their instagram right um yeah, and so I was doing that, um, but I was like literally, I, I was literally having a mental breakdown every month because I just put too much on myself when I was doing the web series. Like I was doing the casting, I was doing the writing, I was doing Taking the directing. I had to pay for like the camera people and the sound, and I, I, I applaud myself thinking about it now. I was like, wow, I was producing an episode every month. Um, and even then, I still feel like that's not enough. But like thinking about now, I was like, well, God, how how how, 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 how could I do, do more? That? How could you do more? How did yeah. you do what you did? And I definitely want to bring the show back. I just want to get a team because, uh, like, support. Yeah, I. I'm not even joking. I was literally having a mental breakdown. Like I was crying. I was screaming every month. I remember my old roommate. I feel so bad. I had I had this roommate. One time I filmed a thing and I accidentally deleted all the footage. Oh my god. Oh my god. And I feel so bad. I literally went insane like i like just finished editing that's not, not even that's not even the thing like i finished editing it not in yeah and editing I, not raw footage uh, you edited the footage. i like literally i don't even remember how i did it but i edited it i was almost done editing and then i think i was just trying to clear out my computer because like i it was being right. really slow and i accidentally put all the files and like and i deleted them all and i was trying to get them back and my uh, old roommate she like did like computer stuff so i was like can you help me please and she's like yeah of course and when she couldn't i like didn't take it out on her but i was like oh my god like screaming crying yeah, and worst. she was like oh uh, i'm sorry no but yeah. like oh, oh i was man. insane i was insane and that's the worst <laughs> she moved out not because of 
that i don't think <laughs> you don't think <laughs> yeah, i don't think but you she did think. move out a couple months later um yeah it was just too much for me um and it was one of those th- and that's actually kind of why i got into stand up because when cuz i love sketch i love improv but it does require other people right to support you like because with an improv team you need to like find people who have the same language as you same chemistry um and that was really hard for like i found some people but it's also just like working around their schedules things like that and then when it came to this like it was also just me doing everything and it was like hard working around like the actor's schedules like my dp schedule and i was just it's insane and then 2018 i turned 25 and i was kind of just like fuck like i'm getting older now and this is actually when i started becoming more serious about comedy and i was just like you know what like i'm going to do stand up like i i have a lot of friends that are in stand up um and it it not in the sense like it's easy but it just looked easier in the sense like oh you just have to rely on yourself to do it easier you know to get started and to do it e- when you would want to do it yes and um and that's like another crazy thing too when people are like oh you you do stand up and it's like one of those things where i was like yeah but i would have never ever thought i didn't even like watching stand-up when i was a kid like in high school my dad loved watching um <laughs> carlos mencia <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. um oh my dad's name was carlos and i was like oh carlos like he'd always watch him dave Chappelle. but i remember i was never interested i was like i liked the visuals like i like seeing sketch comedy because sure. i could see them being silly and funny i didn't like sitting there and like watching someone listen talk. yeah listen yeah. to someone being funny it didn't excite you right it did not excite me until like i got a f- i have a friend you know or gabby my friend gabby Abby, yeah. she started doing stand up, and I'd go to her shows, and she was always so great. And then I like kind of inspired me, and I'd always be like, I want to do it. But then, then I'd always chicken out. And then when it's when I turned twenty five, I was like, No, what the fuck am I doing? Like, you know, this will help you, like, you know, get out there. You, you already kind of know how it works, um, you know, because I'd go to shows with her, or open mics with yeah, her sometimes. The, kind of in the world already. I was, yeah, I was like getting into the world, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. And then like I did my fir- um, I did my first mic. Uh, like in 2018 and I think it was really helpful to have her and like other friends that were in stand up being like hey you're gonna be bad at first you're gonna be real bad like because I don't think people realize that when they go and they think not oh, everyone yeah like everyone you go in and you think oh I'm gonna be so good and then you're not and then you give up you know so I, I think it was nice to like know like okay like this is a process it's gonna take a while until I'm good at it no, like yeah. anything else you know of course. and so it took me a while just to like learn how to do it and I feel like I am still obviously I'm still learning because it's only been like a year and a few months how many minutes can you do um it's interesting because I definitely thought I had like 10 minutes. Um, and then like recently I've been kind of like, I don't like those jokes anymore. Yeah. I mean, I guess I do. I guess I do have 10 minutes. But like in my head now, I'm like, those jokes are not, not funny to me anymore. Um, so now I'm in, the, I'm per- currently in the process of like doing a new set. But let's just say I do have 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do you do other characters besides the one I saw or, or like sort of... S- yeah, characters, I guess, or sketches, even. Yes, but they're all horror themed. But they're funny. Yeah, they're funny. Ho- yeah, funny, funny horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had like this one character called Talking with Tiffany. She was like a YouTuber. She was like a vlogger. Um, and she was like in the early episodes of my terror tales. Like this is like 2016 was when I developed her. She's just like a crazy vlogger who'll do anything to like become famous. Um, like she does like a tutorial like how to like. <laughs> how to cut your face off like you know like how yeah. to kill your boyfriend like yeah, you very know very provocative things just to get attention yeah like you I know gotcha. like um she did like a tutorial like doing like a a whole makeup look with like killing her mom and like using her mom's and like ashes and to like yeah and very deadpan delivery, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah the very first episode that like murder is great yeah <laughs> well it's funny because i remember my terror tales was kind of like oh it's like decent like i'm starting off a sketch team but she was the first character where people were like oh i like this character she should have her own show um but i would only just bring her sometimes when i just needed a filler like she was the easiest to film because i just film on my phone because i'm just like oh i'm a vlogger rather than hiring a dp and all this stuff but i feel like her her episodes always got like the most attention because i think people just it's easy to relate to like oh we see all those fucking crazy vloggers out there but she just takes it to the extreme yeah, I you get know <laughs> i follow yeah 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 and so um yeah so that's her talking with tiffany she's just like a valley girl um, who kills? <laughs> She's a valley girl who kills and wants views and fans. Um, 
And then I had my, my one my one friend Jared, he like moved to New York recently and I'm so sad that he did because him and I would always do like sketches together. And like for my show Fresh Fish, if I ever like if I didn't want to do stand up, I'd be like, I want to do a sketch. Like, let's write something real quick. And it was like, we just spoke the same language. It was so easy to write something really quick. And we put it on stage and everyone loved it. And I'm like, damn. And then he just recently moved. And I'm like, so sad he moved. Um, so it just like depends. We did like a, we did um, like a pair, like when the Oscars happened with, do you remember the, um, the Oscars last year with, what's her face? Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper, how they did, they sang the song Shallow yeah. at the Oscars. Well, him and I like did like a parody of that scene but like we were just like like about to like make out we're like on top of each other like yeah. we're just friends and then we're like making out and like yeah, playing like the Lady piano Gaga is not with bradley cooper in real life but they're supposed to have be like the romantic in the movie yeah and yeah yeah singing this romantic song right everyone had their suspicions like oh something's on between them you know and yeah. so we did like sketches like that that were just so silly and so funny um and then like we just did just like yeah numerous different sketches we're making just pretty much making fun like parodies of things i got you that's fine um i personally am really bad with accents i can't do i'm notorious for that i've been in so many sketch shows at ucb and then they would be like okay can you do this accent i'm like why like why no i can't and i would i would learn it for them and it'd be decent by the time the show came up but i'm really bad with accents i was like something i'm jealous of i'm like oh when i yeah. see like characters. is that actors, something you want to want to get better at yeah, but I guess I don't even know where I'd go to like figure out how to a how to do accents. Tra- you're better off. I guess you're better off learning a specific accent for a specific role that yeah. you need it for. Maybe a better use of time. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Wanna, I don't want to tell actors what to what to do and what not. Oh to no, do. for sure. Like I know what you mean, but it's just like interesting because I I have like because I you know I'm in the UCB community and I know so many of my friends who could just hear an accent and they could just right. do it. And I'm like I cannot do that. I cannot. I remember I was supposed to be, um, I was supposed to be German for like a sketch I was in, and I just sounded uh, like Spanish. <laughs> and everyone's like, "Stop!" <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah, I was supposed to be like a Russian spy or something. I can't remember, but I just sounded like. <laughs> well, was, you, just, you got time to learn. You got time to learn. Right. Um, time to work on it. What would you say is like your your long term or dreams, goals, plans? Because you got it sounds like you got a lot of toes in different water. You like sketch, you got some stand up going, you're, right. you're acting, you're rewriting things. What where where do you like see yourself in five, ten years or sooner or whatever the case may be? What's um what's I, the ideal? I think the ideal goal for me, um I want to the only reference that I can really think of that I feel like in like five to 10 years, if I'm like, you know, Lauren Lapkus. Maybe. um, She's like a big comedian, or sorry, a big uh, improviser. Well, yeah, comedian, but yeah, she's an improviser. She gets all these, if you see, I'll show you a picture right now. You're going to know who exactly she is. Um, She gets like all these roles on like TV and commercials. But like, it's like she's famous, but she's not like too famous, you know? I'm like, if I can get that level of famous, I would actually be very, very happy. Yeah, semi-famous. Yeah, you know her. She was on um, uh, Orange is the New Black. Um, She's on all these like movies and commercials. And I'm like, if I could just like only, if I could just have a name for myself in the sense like I can, don't have to worry about, like I could be going to book a movie, book a commercial and just like live off that. Then You want to work. Yeah, I'd be so happy. You want to work and create your own own things. I do want to create my own too. That's the thing. That's a goal too. I would love to actually produce my own horror film. Wow. Yeah. And act in it and write it and Mm -hmm. and direct it too, Mm -hmm. the whole thing. Yeah, it's interesting because I just, uh, like, you know, they say write what you know, and I always had been fascinated with the idea of, um, you know, mental illness just because, like, my mom, sure. um, she was, like, manic bipolar, and she'd, like, imagine things all the time. And I always, like, it is, like, a scary situation, you know, if you don't understand it. So I always, like, found, like, that to be, like, interesting, and I would always like to, like, write a horror movie. But, but I definitely know there's so many movies like that, like Hereditary. Did you ever see Hereditary? I don't believe that, but... When I saw it, I was kind of like, damn, I wish I thought of that. It was like one of those things where, like, kind of like Shutter Island kind of moment. It's like, is he crazy or are the, yeah. the, is the place actually haunted? You know, like, so... Heredi- you figure out your spin. Yeah, like, I was like, oh, okay, like, because... Yeah, because in Hereditary, fucking beautiful movie. I love it. It's one of my favorite movies. It's like battling with the ideas like, oh, are they like mentally ill or is the this her family actually in a cult? You know, 
because my mom, she would imagine all these crazy things. And um, I remember one time my cousins and I were joking about it. Candida, or sorry, Michelle. We call her Candida, but her, actually her name is Michelle, my cousin. I remember one time I was like, she's my cousins were very fascinated. Like, what did your mom used to say? What did she used to think? And I remember telling them, and then I remember Michelle was just like, what if she's just telling the truth? <laughs> and like, we're all like, you know, yeah. and like, we just don't believe her. And that was like my first time experiencing like finding the humor in like these dark situations. And we we're kind of like laughing about like the things she did and what happened. And, and all like, it is a serious thing, but it was at least like sort of like a, like a, a relief of like, oh, like my life isn't so terrible. It's like, I have like now like an interesting story I can like laugh about and joke about. What else can you do? Yeah, what else can you do? Um, so I would, yeah, I would love to write my own horror film. But yeah, I definitely want to make my own spin on it. I have ideas, but I need to just like work them out. I hear you. That is the goal. That is the goal too. I'd love to write my own horror movie. Cool. Well, get to work. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you get to work now. Right? No, for real. I appreciate the time for sure. Why don't you tell everyone where they could find you, follow you, what oh, you're working yeah. on, plug yourself, plug Fresh Fish, do your thing. Okay, what yeah. What's yours? Um, on Twitter, Instagram, um, I my my username is Adri M F D S, so it's A D R I M F D I A Z. Um, I got in Twitter uh, later in the game, so if you see I only have like a hundred followers, uh, just ignore that. <laughs> I produce content. Um, and yeah, find me on Instagram. Um, I have a, a live show that I do. It's the first and third Mondays of the month called Fresh Fish. It's a variety show. We do like stand up sketch. Um, in L A. In L A. Yes, in L A. Yes. Um. Yeah, we like do a live show there, and it's so fun. I have so much fun doing it. But yeah, first and third Monday, it's a free show, free free drinks, um, free snacks. Um, you were there. You were there I've this been Monday there a couple of times. A couple of times. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. When did you come the other time? I was at the other one with uh, where I met Mark. It was. Uh, oh. Yeah. What was that show? I that was a, like a couple months ago, right? Or like a month like ago. All ago. the days blend together. Um, I'm blending in. Yeah. I'm blending the shows, in. the weeks. I don't know. I don't know where don't I'm know. meeting who. I don't know who's <laughs> who. I don't where know am who's I? <laughs> confusing who's at, this person's act with this other person's Oh, act. for sure. For sure. But it's been fun. Right. Um, so there's that show. I mean, if you want to take a trip down memory lane, you could check out my web series. It's on um, Facebook, YouTube called Terror Tales of LA. The logo is like a little skull with a Dodgers cap on it. So that's how you know that's mine. Um, but I do want to produce more, so there's not any new ones since like 2018, late 2018. I got you. Well, so, yeah. I'm sure there's more coming down the pike. Thanks again. I appreciate mm-hmm. the time for sure. Of course. You got to talk soon. Okay, thanks. So there you have it, my conversation with Adri Diaz. We covered a lot. Barbie dolls in love with each other, petty theft, and how German accents are hard. For real though, I thank Adri for uh, hosting me in her studio, and I look forward to uh, seeing her perform again real soon. Anyway, for everything about this show, of course, head to peoplewelovepodcast.com. And I think that's about all I got for today. I appreciate you guys listening. Thanks as always, and uh, talk soon. Peace.